guys, it's Dana and it's time to talk about money. And in this video, I wanted to share with you ways that you can live below your means. Now, if you're struggling to build an emergency fund, or maybe every month you feel like you're dipping into your emergency fund and you're struggling to pay your basic bills, then that's probably a sign that you are not living below your means. So the first step you have to do is make sure that you know how much you're making and how much you're spending. Because if you don't know, then it's very easy to get out of control. So it's very simple to do. Look at your bank account for the prior month, go through and write down all the transactions that were in your bank account. So you can do it on a piece of paper or you can do it in a spreadsheet. So then once you have everything written out, then you know you have much a much clearer picture about where you stand. So do you need to earn extra money? And if you do, I just put a video out last week talking about 10 side hustles that you can do at home to earn extra money. So maybe you need to work on earning extra money or you need to work on reducing your expenses and spending less. I recommend possibly doing what I do and that is to clean out your closet, clean out your wardrobe and try to have a basic wardrobe. So every day I basically wear a black shirt, that's it. So my entire wardrobe at this point is now like five or six just black shirts, like with collars on them. And I used to feel nervous about doing this, but then I became empowered because I was watching Laura from Garden Answer, who I've been watching for years. And if you watch her, she wears only black shirts, like in all of her videos. And people have even commented on that, but she said she doesn't want her fashion or her wardrobe to be the focus of her channel or her videos. She wants it to be on her gardening advice and, and all that. So it kind of empowered me to be like, yeah, you know what? I can just wear simple black shirts every day. And I do, and nobody has ever remarked on it. And I am in conference calls every day at work and it's the waist up, but you can just dress yourself up with earrings. I have hoop earrings, um, maybe some necklaces, but basically I'm wearing almost like the same style shirt every day and nobody notices because it's black and it's just like, it looks professional. It's no problem. I don't have to think about it. And when you think, when you wear shirts that have patterns on them, people are more likely to notice that. And then you can't really wear the same shirt like two days later, you know, after you've watched it, of course. Um, but like, you know, then they'll be like, oh, you just wore that shirt two days ago, didn't you? Uh, but if you have just a plain black shirt, you could do laundry, you know, the ne that night and wash it and, you know, you could wear it again and nobody's really going to say anything. At least that's been my experience. So where can you reduce or simplify your clothing so that way you're not having to think about spending money on trending outfits um, and whatnot. So that's, that's the first thing I would suggest. Food is a big one. Uh, expenses for food can be high. We have six people in our family. We have teenagers, uh, the kids eat a lot, then our grocery bill gets high. And one of the main ways we, we try to keep costs down is I try to, we, well, we eat at home. We don't eat out a lot. In fact, we were talking about how our kids have very minimal experience in restaurants uh, to the point that they had to do a school project and write down their favorite restaurants. And they were like, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so they couldn't really write any restaurants because we haven't been to a lot of restaurants. And uh, anyway, so if you think about staple products that you can purchase, uh, I did, I've done some crazy food challenges, but I ate only potatoes for 30 days. Uh, so potatoes are a great one. You can put them in a lot of different uh, recipes, different dishes, rice, obviously. Um, when we were getting out of debt, I ate only beans and salsa. Uh, you could do pasta and there's different things. You can make soups, you know, if you're going to have onions and potatoes, egg noodles, you can make, you know, a big giant pot of soup and you could have that for a couple days throughout the week. So there are ways to reduce the cost of food. If you think about what products you can buy sort of in bulk and then make multiple meals out of them. So, uh, of course food is so individual, what you like to eat. It has to be something that you enjoy eating and that you like, but I know a lot of people buy a lot of oils and soy sauces and they make their own salad dressings and you can also, you know, flavor different, different things that you make to make them taste good. So if you, you know, just to your preference, but something to look into is to try to reduce your food costs, um, by really being intentional about what you are purchasing and what you're going to do with it. Meal planning, obviously. Um, also, Coffee, let's talk about coffee. Coffee is a big one. 
brew it at home. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than purchasing it out. And you can even go online. I've done this in the past where I went onto Amazon and I bought like a bunch of those paper Starbucks cups and then I would brew the coffee at home and pour it into that cup. And then I would feel like I had gone to Starbucks and I went out and bought a coffee, but it was not. I had just made it at home. And then I would take that with me when I was going to sporting events or if I'd go out and it looked like I had just been at a Starbucks, but I hadn't. I had just brewed the coffee at home. So uh, definitely think about you know ways you can make your own hot beverages at home. Gas prices. I am definitely a proponent of stocking your local gas stations as far as price goes. Uh, look around, see which gas station has the lowest price and try to be really intentional about when you fill up the gas in your car so you're not like stuck out and about just having to pull into any the first gas station you pass and then you're having to fill up at the pump somewhere that might be a little bit more expensive. So if you can kind of be aware of the prices in your area, so then you can kind of make sure you go to that particular gas station. Also just cutting back on driving. When we purchased our house, uh, we intentionally bought a house that was within walking distance because we have four kids. Our house is within walking distance of our schools. So all the kids can walk home from school. Um, it's very easy if they have sporting uh, sports after school uh, practice. My son's in play practice right now. They can walk home from all of those things. And that really cuts down the amount of money we spend on gas and also just wear and tear on our cars. Speaking of cars, Utilities are something I think you should probably look into every two years to see if you can get them to lower the price or you can switch to another provider. Uh, car insurance, you know, you might want to look into that, see if you can lower your car insurance. As an example, for our trash services, we I did notice with our trash company, it was like every two years the price just they just kind of would keep sneaking the price up. And so if I would call them every two years and be like, hey, you know, why is this price so much more expensive? I'm thinking of switching to this other trash company. Then they would be like, oh, well, we can give you this deal. We'll lower the price, you know, what? and then they would lower it. And then again, two years later, I'd be like, oh, it's back up again. I got to call and get them to lower it again. But sometimes just making a phone call will lower your bill. Or you could call your cell phone provider or be like, you know, I... I'm going to switch to another carrier because your prices are too high. They might, they might give you a deal and lower it. So definitely look into what you're paying for everything and maybe you can switch something up where you can uh, reduce those expenses. Last on my list is that I suggest joining a community, whether it's my YouTube channel, other YouTube channels, Facebook groups. If you're a part of some kind of community where you can read other people's comments or you know share your own experiences, it does help to keep you motivated. Uh, it helps me, and I you know I know a lot of people say it does help them as well. So joining some kind of community that um, who you feel like you align with or you you know um, enjoy their content, I think is is very helpful to help keep you on track. Because when you surround yourself with like-minded people, it does help you to um, to to keep going and following a good direction because I've said in the past, you know, to evaluate who you hang out with, not necessarily everybody likes that advice, but I'm just, you know, if you're with someone who does a lot of spending, eats out a lot, then you're more likely to go to a lot of restaurants. And if someone you're with is always buying, you know, the most expensive car, they're always pulling up in, in your driveway with this really flashy car, it might make you feel like, oh, we need to get a new car. <laughs> so just Think about who you're spending time with online or in real life, and that can make a difference subconsciously as far as what you're spending money on. So it can uh, it can really, and also I was reading for a while a bunch of books on ego, and that really does help if you sort of get into psychology a little bit and read why is it, why is it that you are feeling the need to drive a really fancy car or to, you know, be wearing the most trending fashions, right? So is there some something there that you can analyze in yourself uh, as far as your ego goes, as far as how, why you feel the need to be impressing whoever it is you're trying to impress? So it's always a good idea to work on self-development. And uh, so you could take time maybe instead of going out to dinner, maybe listening to an audiobook. I find it easier sometimes to listen to those types of books in an audiobook because I can walk around and do dishes, do laundry, make beds, change sheets while I'm listening to that that content. And then it's uh, sometimes it can be dry, you know, and you're like, I don't want to sit down and read a book about my ego. <laughs> but if you can listen to something in your earbuds while you're doing something else when I'm outside weeding or doing work in the yard, then I do listen to a lot of content that way. And um, I like to multitask, but that way it can help you to enrich your life.
life and listen to other ideas and maybe expand the way you think about certain things uh, in that way. All right, so hopefully that helps some of you. If you have some other ideas of how to live below your means, those I'm sure you do, then leave it down below in the comments so that others can read those and get ideas. Again, thank you for being here. If it's your first time here, be sure to subscribe and I will talk to you guys in the next video.